We here at Celtic News are still smiling after the weekend's win at Ibrox as we beat them 1-0. Whilst it is the international break, we do still have some massive Celtic news that I want to discuss. And not only that, but we'll also take a look at what Ali McCoy said with regards to a Celtic duo. But first, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. Celtic fans would have ended up relatively pleased with how the club's summer transfer window ended up. The champions signed nine players in total, although a fair few did depart Glasgow's East End. Supporters are yet to see a few of the Hoops' latest additions take to the field, but one imagines it won't be long before that transpires. Throughout the summer transfer window, the boys were linked to a range of players. Rumours and reports came and went each day, however one that seemed constant and excited fans involved Daniel Podence. The Portuguese winger had fallen out of favour at Premier League side of Wolves and was keen on a move away from the Molyneux. Celtic were said to be interested on several occasions, but a fee of over £10 million was mentioned. Recent news from Greek journalist Giannis Tropoulopoulos, though, states the 27-year-old will return to his old side Olympiakos. Podence will join the club on loan, but perhaps the option to buy clause in the loan deal is surprising. For as little as €6 million, Euros, Podence could sign for Olympiakos permanently, should they take up the option. This is much less than the fee Celtic were being quoted, which makes one wonder, did Hoops dodge a bullet? Neil Lennon has increased the pressure on Michael Bill after yet another Celtic derby win. It proved to be another beautiful Sunday for Celtic in this fixture as a first half stoppage time strike from Kyogo did the damage in front of the disgruntled Rangers fan base. There's some angry bears was the summation from Chris Sutton during his live commentary duties. His former teammate Lennon seems to think the same about the way things are heading for our rivals under Bill. Michael has had six, five last year and now this one, and he's not won any of them, Lennon said on PLZ Soccer Football Show. That's a big black mark against him. He has to start winning these games, otherwise the fans aren't going to believe in him. They've got to see progression with the team, they've got to see a style of play and I don't think they're seeing that at the minute. When you're coaching one of the big teams in Glasgow, there's an expectation you're going to beat Hibs, Hart, Aberdeen. You have to win it with a certain style. When you're playing Rangers as Celtic, just win it. It doesn't matter how you win it. By Thursday, the performance is forgotten about. Whilst Lennon's claims about Bill never having won a derby as manager isn't true, the fact he has forgotten about the sole victory does kind of reinforce his point. Bill's Rangers did beat us 3-0 in the final derby of last season at Ibrox, but that fixture didn't matter in the slightest with Celtic already crowned as champions. He's lost four of the other five, drawn the other in Govan. The fact that all four of those Celtic victories have been by a single goal is a point that should not be lost. Rangers have had spells in all those wins, with every match being a nail-biting finish for the Hoops faithful. But the simple fact is that we have the mentality to win these games while the Ibrox side don't. That was the case under Ange Postagoglu, it's already proven to be the same under Brendan Rodgers. Despite his trademark public bluster, Bill is under immense pressure now. We can keep ramping that up by winning game after game following the international break. Ali McCoy has held Callum McGregor and Kyogo for their performances following Celtic's 1-0 win against Rangers at Ibrox on Sunday. The former striker thinks Celtic's man with the armband was excellent in the first half, and Kyogo's first half and first time finish was superb. But McCoy is also forthright in his opinion by claiming that the Rangers and Celtic teams yesterday might be the worst I have seen in a while, as he added that they were bang average at best. It needs to be noted that Brennan Rodgers has a number of key players out of action, not forgetting the inexperienced duo that started at the heart of defence, Gustav Lagerbilk and Liam Scales, the latter was held by Noel Lennon after the game. The boys are only going to get better from here, especially with Rodgers in his second stint as manager trying to get the grips with his new squad. Nonetheless, this is what McCoy's had to say about Celtic's winner Ibrox and the quality of both sides. Cards out on the table right now, I thought both teams were a bang average at best, said McCoy. It might be the worst Rangers Celtic team I've seen in a while. The only real bit of class in the game was the finish from Kyogo, a tremendous finish. I thought Callum McGregor in the first half was excellent and the finish was superb. Celtic defender Liam Scales has been detailing his next steps after his breakthrough performance at Ibrox on Sunday. It seems a little strange to use the word breakthrough for a player who was signed more than two years ago, but the performance in the win over Rangers was undoubtedly Scales' best so far in a Celtic shirt. The Irishman started a little nervously alongside Gustav Lager Bilk, but grew as the game went on, eventually being named as man of the match by broadcaster Sky Sports. In truth, it was Lager Bilk who looked more error ridden in the new Celtic centre back partnership. All I can do is my best, Scales said after the match to the daily record. I need to make it difficult for the manager and just put in good performances. 
And if I can keep clean sheets in every game I play, put in good performances, defend well and be good on the ball, then I'll give him a headache at least. That's all I'm looking at now. It's just taking it game by game, doing as well as I can just to make him have a decision to make. Maybe if there weren't a couple of injuries, I wouldn't have got this chance, but it's great to be in this position and I have to make the most of it. He trusts me in how I can play. I had a full pre-season to get used to the style of play, so that was it. Just go in and play my game. There's a lot to admire about Scales and his honesty. He clearly knows his current role in the squad and where he is likely to be placed once the injured central defenders return. Cameron Carter-Vickers, Mark Nowaki, Stephen Welsh and new son and Nat Phillips all didn't feature in the matchday squad at Ibrox. With Lega Bilk and Yugo Kobayashi also in the mix, that's a lot of bodies for Scales to battle with for game time. The likelihood is that the former Shamrock Rovers man struggles for minutes going forward. With Fairnoy just our second match after returning, you would think Brendan Rodgers would want to have the experience Nat Phillips in alongside Lega Bilk. Carter Vickers will undoubtedly come back to start at some stage, while Milwaukee may be viewed as the second best option. Scales was signed as a left back in 2021, with Greg Taylor and Alexandre Bernabe failing to hit heights so far this season. Perhaps that could be the best avenue for game time. Let's hope he finds a way to kick on after Sunday's excellent performance. The UK government published a consultation document on August 30th titled Guidelines for Taking Passengers to Sporting Events in Scotland. The proposals within these documents are not just alarming, they are an affront to civil liberties and an attempt to further demonise the lifeblood of football, its fans. This isn't a Celtic issue or a Rangers issue, it's a football issue that affects us all. The Senior Traffic Commissioner is asking the UK government for permission to enact measures that are nothing short of draconian. Bus companies must inform a dedicated football officer 48 hours before the game about the number of supporters expected to travel, the number of vehicles booked and the contact details of the person who made the booking. Buses are prohibited from stopping within 10 miles of the ground without police permission. They can't stop at any pub for a beer unless it's sold with a substantial meal. They can't drop off or pick up fans at any unauthorised locations without prior police permission. Furthermore, buses must arrive at the venue no earlier than two hours before and no later than one hour before the scheduled start of the game unless directed otherwise by the police. These proposals are a blatant infringement on the civil liberties of football fans. The requirement to inform a dedicated football officer about a travel plan is a gross invasion of privacy. Are we criminals that our movements need to be monitored so closely? This sets a dangerous precedent that could be extended to other areas of public life. Let's not forget about the economic implications. Pubs and small businesses around football stadiums are already struggling, especially in these trying times. These proposals would further strangle these establishments, many of which rely on the business of travelling fans. Whilst a fan-led campaign opposing these measures is crucial, it's high time that football clubs and their CEO step up. Their silence would just be complicity. Fans are not just numbers on a balance sheet, they are the heart and soul of the club. Rather than being demonised, they should be celebrated. These proposals are just not an attack on football fans, they are an attack on our freedom, community and very essence of the sport we all love. This is a bipartisan issue that transcends club loyalties. We must stand united in opposing these draken and measures. The consultation is calling for a response from relevant stakeholders and that includes every fan who has ever cheered for their team, bought a ticket or travelled to an away game. It's time to make our voices heard. Let's protect the beautiful game from becoming a police state. Celtic fans, what are your final thoughts from the weekend? Let me know down in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video, guys. Make sure you drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. Remember, we have released our brand new Celtic t-shirts with our Brendan Rodgers Pope t-shirt and our Celtic Ultra t-shirts too. You can find them at celtapower.com or just go down to the link in the description. Thank you, take care, bye-bye.